when you're trying to go up the ranks, people who got your back and who mentor you through that come in the unlikeliest of fashion sometimes. It's not always who you think has your back. So again, relationships matter. If you have the opportunity to break through with somebody and and really have authentic conversations, they'll tell you who has your back and who doesn't. They'll tell you if you think somebody is sponsoring you, but they really aren't. But you have to have, you have to plant your people, build those relationships so that they feel like you will, they will share something in confidence with you. Um, Because if they're at the table, yes. they're there for a reason. Yes, yes. So I always offer, do you have anything to add to this conversation? Because sometimes everybody else is just taking over the conversation. They talking <laughs> loud and fast. And that person's like, trying. you see it. So do you have anything to add? But the other thing is, if I know, if it's somebody in my organization and I know they're coming into a big meeting for the first time, I reach out ahead of time. I want them to know, one, they have an ally in the room with them. Two, I want to make sure they understand the dynamics that they're about to walk in. Is it a lion's den or is this friendly fire? Right. You know, I need you to know what you're walking into. Sometimes it's the lion's den. Sometimes it's friendly. But, you, but that person needs to know. And then my question to them is the pre-gaming before the meeting is, what is it you want to get out of? What do you, how do you want to show up? And then I'm here to support you in that instance. And just as important as that pre-gaming of the meeting, I like to follow up with them on the post-game of the meeting. And this not have to be anybody that reports directly to me, but at the end of the day, I don't want to see any people of color, women, not show up well in a dominated industry or meeting that they're coming to them for the first time, mm. you know? I don't want to see that. Uh, and I take care for that. So it's, I think to add to what that other person said is the pre and the post game of it. How did, how did it feel? What did you accomplish what you want to accomplish? What would you do differently? You know, um, and my advice to them going into there is you need to have something to say. You're at the table for a reason. Don't mm -hmm. be afraid to use your voice. Yeah, don't be afraid. Very good. Very good. Let me ask you, how has sponsorship helped you through your career? When I say sponsorship, I talk about, we can call it mentors, or, yeah. but you know, executive sponsorship, how has that helped you throughout your years? It comes in the most unlikely fashion. Um, I say those are my truth sayers, you know. Uh, I have my executive coach who's just been an amazing woman who I was introduced to in uh, PepsiCo, Trudy Bourgeois who is coach friend now is, she will tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Uh, and that's been invaluable because we grow in that way. My former managers, you know, I keep that little posse keep going and people I've worked for, we become friends. I've had people who were my employees who've been my mentors, who I allow and I open giving them the space to how do I connect with them? How, that's your, you know, well, should we do this? What well, you know, those are mentors. Uh, and then I will say, when you're trying to go up the ranks, people who got your back and who mentor you through that come in the unlikeliest of fashion sometimes. It's not always who you think has your back. So again, relationships matter. If you have the opportunity to break through with somebody and, and really have authentic conversations, they'll tell you who has your back and who doesn't. They'll tell you, if you think somebody is sponsoring you, but they really aren't. But you have to have, you have to plant your people, build those relationships so that they feel like you will, they will share something in confidence with you. Um, and I give back. So the, the tables are turned. I, I feel it's very important for me to be authentic and honest with people. Uh, I, and one little story I'll, I'll share is there was a young woman Right. And in the finance function, not my function, finance function. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing her name come up for promotion. Kept hearing it come up. Nobody, black female. No one would give her the time of day. And I finally asked, like, what is it? 
-hmm. Why isn't this brilliant talent being given the opportunity? Mm -hmm. And they, the first time someone said it, she doesn't look the part. She doesn't look the part. I said, look, what are you talking Tell me more, tell me more. You know, I, went, I got in on that one. Then someone else who is a person of color says, she dresses like she's bought her clothes at the dollar store or Walmart or whatever. And we, we need her to have more executive presence. That's a quotation, executive presence. I said, okay, this is culture, culture. And I said, well, can I talk to her? Do you, how do you feel me talking to her? And you know what? I pulled her aside and I said, honey, I'm going to send you somewhere. We're going to have an authentic conversation about this. I said, you have so much potential. I said, but here's what, and this person said, but I want to be myself. I said, I hear you. I understand. I said, but when we ascend in, in positions of power, you then have a ability to influence the norms. Mm -hmm. But as a very junior person, I'm trying to tell you what's stopping you.